Now, hello everyone there in your classrooms. You're very welcome to Farming Through the Seasons. This is the first of the Farming Through the Seasons for the year and we are in the season of autumn. My name is Amy and AgriWare are hosting this lovely webinar today and you are going to meet one of our dairy farmers who we've partnered with on this initiative. So we have Connor Morris who is a dairy farmer all the way in County Kerry. So before I introduce you to our dairy farmer I would like to you guys to say hello to us. So if your teacher could write in the Q&A box you can let us know what schools you're coming in from, what class you might be in and we will learn a little bit more of who is with us today. So if you look at the bottom of the screens to the Q&A box, your teacher can type in and let us know who is here. I'll have a look at the participants and see if I recognize anybody. Who do we have? We have Castletown National School. We have second class and third class. Hi to Castletown. Very good. Lovely to have you. We have Rang of Three in GBB is Swords. So in, du in Dublin, is it Swords in Dublin? We have Junior Infants and Senior Infants, oh and First Class in Castletown, so there's lots of pupils on from Castletown and they are all the way in Donegal. Hello everybody. We have St John's Parochial School in Tralee. Hi everybody. That's First, Second and Third Class. Very good. Oh, and there's some junior infants from Skull Thomas. Hi, junior infants, all the way in Castle Knock. Oh, and we have lots of pupils from Kilcrohan National School in Bantry, Bantry in West Cork. Hello, everybody. So we have a great mix of ages and of counties involved today. So you're all very, very welcome. So I am first going to just set the scene for what we're about to learn today. So we're going to watch a little video about the story of milk. So this will help any of our younger viewers to learn a little bit more about how milk gets all the way from the grass to the glass. So that will just be a two minute video and then I will introduce you to our farmer, Connor, today all the way from County Kerry. So let's have a little look. There'll be many opportunities later to have some more shout outs and to ask questions. Yeah, one second there. We'll get our story of milk video. Now, here we go. This is the story of milk. From grass to glass. Milk is produced by mammals. The cow is a very well-known producer of milk. They make milk to feed their calves and to feed people. Farmers used to milk their cows by hand, but this can be very dangerous. Cows are very large animals. Nowadays, we use big machines to milk our cows. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. First the farmer must squeeze out the milk to make sure that it looks healthy. They're looking to make sure that it's not a strange colour and doesn't have any funny lumps. Then they clean each teat to get rid of any germs. It's very important that we don't add extra germs to our milking machine. Next they attach a part of the milking machine called the cluster to each one of the cow's teat. The cluster will lightly squeeze the teeth to extract the milk from the cow's udder. The milk gets stored in a big fridge. This keeps it cool and stops germs from growing. A truck with a milk tank on the back comes to collect the milk and bring it to the creamery. At the creamery, the milk gets pasteurized this heats the milk to 72 degrees to kill dangerous bacteria. This is not quite as hot as your kettle, but pretty close. The milk is then put into bottles or cartons to be sent to the shop where it is purchased by you or your family. And that is the story of how milk gets from grass to glass. Thanks for watching.
Now that was just a little introduction to how milk gets from grass all the way to glass. So I'm now going to introduce you to Connor. So Connor, if you can hear us, you can pop on your video and your microphone and I'll introduce you to the pupils. Hi, Hi everyone. How are you? Very good now. Nice, so Connor is all the way in County Kerry. Is there anybody here from County Kerry? You can let us know in the Q&A box. Now, Connor has prepared a few videos for us to watch. So it's just much easier for us to show you exactly what's going on when we film the videos ahead of time. So we have a short video just to watch and Connor will speak during the video and we'll have a little virtual tour of his farm and of his setup. So thanks a million for those videos, Connor. And then afterwards, sure. you can submit your questions for Connor and he'll be able to answer anything that you need to know about his farm. Super. Okay, we've got some Cork students. Um, I'm not sure if we have any Kerry students on today, but that's all right. So we will get started and have a little look at that video. So Connor, if you want, you can mute yourself and turn off your video again, and we'll just have a little look at our virtual tour. Now, here we go. Now, is everybody ready to learn all about Connor's farm? So this is uh, our farm here. Um, so this is where we have our milking parlor here in front of us and the sheds up along the left side there are uh, where we keep the calves in the springtime and uh, in the winter housing. Um, this is where we, uh, where we store all the food uh, or concentrates for the cows, um, so all their nuts, um, and then this is their winter housing. Uh, just before we go on sheds, we have a few, it's, uh, a few poultry. So we have five hens and two laying ducks. Uh, so you can see the, the hens here. Uh, we just have to get and three of them. Uh, as the two older hens that we have have stopped laying, um, as they're a bit, a bit old now, I think they're about maybe uh, eight or nine years old. Uh, so we got a few new ones and hopefully they'll start laying soon. I uh, can't seem to see the duck at the moment. What are there? So there's the little ducks. Um, so they love to chase each other around the place. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they, they give us lovely uh, fresh duck eggs and fresh hen eggs every day. Um, so the hens love to. Uh, nest themselves up in the apple trees there. Um, so often they wish to even trying to escape out over the fence so we have to chase them in. Um, so like I said this is where we keep our uh, cows in winter. Uh, so currently we're actually it's just expanding the shed. Um, so you can see there at the back now it's a little bit of work. It's a bit of a mess but uh, this is where we keep them in the cubicles. So these get cleaned out every day in in, uh, in the winter. So at the moment now we're uh, about to start tidying up the shed, uh, get ready for the next few weeks. So these will be all be washed down. Um, so we put in some new cubicles and beds. You can see they're all quite uh, shiny and new. And out here now we're actually going to be expanding our shed out just to give the cows extra room, so some extra uh, space for them to feed. Um, and uh, just some extra, extra room makes, makes my life easier and it makes their life better as well. So, um, this is our little bobcat, our little tractor. It's the best thing ever. Great fun to drive to. So, these are our cows. Uh, so, we have 81 cows. They are all uh, Holstein Frisians. Um, so, essentially, they're all nearly all black and white, although we do have a few red ones. Um, so now I'm just bringing them down to the milking parlor for uh, the evening milking. Um, so as you see now they're all walking off the field here to, as they know it's trying to move out. So you see there's one of your red coat. This is our milking parlor then. Uh, so we have a 16 unit parlor. Uh, we upgraded this uh, only last year. So we put in a new uh, whole new system um, that will make the milking process faster. Um, uh, I milk here every morning and evening, um, so it takes about two hours from start to finish. Um, 
Um, and uh, well, here's our little resident cat. Um, so they keep us company when we're moving. Uh, so this is kind of it from the partner point of view. Uh, in here, we just have our uh, bulk stores for the milk. So all the milk from the cows goes into here, uh, to this big tank here, uh, which is uh, cools the milk then every day. And then it's collected uh, by a milk lorry. Um, and then it's brought off to be processed to make milk and cheese and um, all the very delicious goods. Uh, so in here is our calf shed. This is where we'll be keeping um, uh, the calves when, after, when they calve down next spring. Uh, so we're joined here by our little kittens. Um, so in here, so once the cows are calved next spring, uh, we will start putting the calves in here um, to mine them in the building groups of five or six. So this time of year, we tend to try and uh, get ahead of the springtime workload and we actually clean out these houses. So these will be all clean, washed down um, and disinfected uh, to make sure there's no uh, any diseases lying around. So that when the calves come in here, it's all nice and healthy for them. So these are our uh, heifer calves. So these would have been born in uh, just the spring gone. So they're about seven to eight months old now. Uh, so we keep about uh, there's 22 calves here this year, so we generally keep about 20 every year, and these would be uh, specifically bred um, off our best animals, um, and we keep them each year. And then on the other side, we have our uh, heifers. So these are uh, the in calf heifers, so they're about uh, just a year old, or so they're about 18 months. Uh, to 20 months old now. Um, so they'll be calving down this spring. Um, so we have 24 of these actually. Um, although one is currently in the shed at the moment that she has a, a dose of pneumonia. So we're just keeping a closer eye on her. So she's been kept inside for a few days to, to have her recuperate. Um, so that's in straw, though, grass now still at the moment. Um, we generally get the the heifers and uh, calves out to grass uh, from um, about the end of March up until uh, early November, all depending on weather. So you can see here from the calves where they are, it's starting to get a little bit mucky um, after the rain um, here. So uh, we're hoping now we'll get keep them out for another few weeks um, before they go in for the winter, uh, and then that be it. Uh, I'm just going to introduce you to our final two animals. So here we have Bruno. Uh, so there we go. Bruno is a cemented bull. Uh, so he's about three years old. Uh, so he's a big, big lad. Um, so and then our other bull, uh, just over here, you might be able to hear him, uh, is Balthazar. Balthazar is a, a Hereford bull. Uh, so you can see him there. There you go. So he's a bit scary looking. Um, he's actually very quiet, but he likes to make a lot of noise. Uh, so Balthazar is about four years old. So he only arrived here this year, whereas we've had uh, Bruno for a couple of years now. Uh, so they're currently uh, on their own as they don't really get along. Uh, and uh, They'll be heading into the shed soon now, as you can see, the fleshy bats are loves to make a big mess in the field. Uh, so they're getting last bit of grass before going into the winter shed now and closing it up. So there we go. Now that was a brilliant overview of what is going on at the farm at the moment during autumn. So thanks a million to Connor for giving us that virtual tour and for sending it on to me as well so we could play it here for you today. So Connor, if you would like to turn back on your video and you can unmute yourself. Perfect. Yep. So we're going to start the Q&A now. So do any pupils in our classroom have any questions for Connor? I'm sure you have lots of things that you'd like to know. So Connor will be able to tell you everything about the farm. Um, my favourite thing that I got to see was uh, Bruno and Balthazar. They're very impressive animals. Uh, can you remind us again, how old are Bruno and Balthazar, Connor? Yeah, so Bruno is he's three years old now. Uh, so he came to us when he was about a year and a half old. 
uh, two years ago, and uh, he's just was, was nearly three and a half now. And then we got Balthazar this year, uh, so he was uh, three when he arrived, almost four now. So they're they're big boys, but they'll they'll be around now for another couple of years anyway. Very good. Uh, and you said they don't get along. No, they don't. They like to, to shout at each other and push each other around. So we have to keep them separate. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's it. So we used to have a, a third bull called Benny. He was a, a black, um, what we call a poly bull or an Aberdeen Angus. And uh, he was uh, he was very gentle. He was very quiet and he himself and Bruno used to lick each other. And uh, they got along very well. But sadly, uh, then he hurt his shoulder, so he, uh, another farmer took him away. So uh, we're, we've only got the two, got two boys now. Okay. Uh, lots of questions coming in here now. Let's have a little look. Oh, well, Junior Infants in Skull Thomas, they just, they want to say hello. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, this is a lovely question. What is your favorite part about your job? Um, I think my favorite part is getting to work with the animals every day. Um, I used to work in an office in Dublin uh, for a few years, and I only came back farming uh, two years ago. And so this is my, my home family farm, uh, and I'm the sixth generation farmer now. Um, but uh, yeah, getting to work with the animals every day is great. Uh, getting to work outside as well, I really enjoy that. So I, I got sick of working in an office every day. And uh, I found myself longing to be working outside. So I decided to make the change and come down and delight that I did. So um, between working outside and the animals, um, that's what we can do too, I think. Very nice. Yeah, being outside is, is very, it's very nice, especially in the autumn. It's my favorite season. <laughs> yeah, except for the rain. Ex yeah, except for the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of questions coming in about the bulls. Um, we might ask yeah. this question because it's important about safety. So, have you any have or, have you ever had any near misses with the bulls? Uh, no, we not we never have. So, I think, like you said, uh, safety on the farm is really important, and it's something that we're always um, looking out for. Um, and when we have uh, animals like the bulls, as I'm sure you can see, they're very big animals. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to be quite careful around them. So we always make sure that when we uh, bring bulls in that they're quiet um, and that they're not um, angry. So uh, then as, when they are here, then we try to keep them either on their own or we put them in with the cows, which keeps them quiet as well. So they like to be around the cows as well and they're far more um, relaxed. Whereas when they're, um, if, if they're in with other bulls, they can be um, uneasy and they tend to, to fight a bit more. So like that, and then when they go into the sheds in winter is when it's probably the most dangerous. Um, so like that, we try to keep them on their own and, and uh, or like that, you know, with maybe a, a couple of cows just to keep them relaxed and they're a bit more comfortable then. So we don't, we try to stay away from them as much as we can and we don't, um, we try to let them do their own thing most of the time. Um, because if you're kind of going near them too much, they, they don't like that either. Yeah, I think that makes sense. As as long as they're they're fed and they're quiet, I guess you could just leave exactly. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the big thing is, once you treat them well, they they'll always be uh, that bit quieter. So it's important just to treat them um, treat them well, like make sure they're well fed and that they're healthy, and they'll be okay then. Um, junior infants in Castle Knock. So they'd like you to explain how the grass. Uh, how the grass that the cows eat turns into milk? It's a little bit of a difficult question, but I, I'm sure you've got an explanation. For it. <laughs> I can try, you know. Um, yeah, so um, so in in Ireland, all the you know, almost all the milk, what we say is grass fed the cows. So all cows are generally outside for most of the year. So you'll see them in the fields out eating the grass. Um, and so the cows will eat the grass. And so um when they eat the grass obviously there's lots of nutrients in the grass then for them to help them produce uh the milk and uh so in terms of the science bit i don't really know uh it wasn't my area of expertise um i what what, what we know here is that the cow eats the grass and the cow produces milk um 
So it's so about we, we try. it's about the energy. So when the cows, when they yeah. eat the grass, they get lots of energy and they use that energy then to make all of that lovely milk. So they eat the grass and then inside their systems, they'll start to produce milk and then dairy farmers can then bring those cows into the dairy parlor to milk them. But what we must remember is that when a cow is giving us milk, that means that they have had a calf. So if they have never had a calf before, they don't produce milk because cows, they make milk to feed their babies like all different mammals. So mammals is, is any animal that makes milk. So people are mammals, humans make milk to feed their babies and cows make milk to feed their babies. So once a cow has had a baby, they'll start to make milk, but they need that grass to give them the energy to make that milk. Between us, we got there. <laughs> yep, well said, Amy. <laughs> now let's have a little look. There's actually quite a few people who would like to know if you have a dog on the farm. I do, I have a dog, she's here somewhere. I'm gonna try and find her there if you want. Um, is, well, she, you know, or is she a, a sheepdog, is she a collie or? She's not a sheepdog, she's a, a black Labrador. Uh, I'm sorry, there. Give me two seconds, she's in the other room here. Oh, that'd be very exciting, wouldn't it everybody, if we got to see her <laughs> on her dog? Come on, come on. Oh, she's coming in to say hello to us. Oh. oh. Hello. Hello. What's her name? This is Shadow. So Shadow is a, she's two years old and she's my lovely black Labrador. Oh. Uh, but she's actually a cross of a, a Labrador and a Collie. So she has a bit of herding instincts in her, um, but she prefers to kind of chase and play with cows rather than actually herd them. So we don't, uh, we don't really use her as a farm dog, to be honest. Uh, but she's a good companion. So we have a lot of fun. We've lots of fun on the farm anyway. So that's that's shadow. Sorry. Yeah, it's good to have a companion on the farm because as a farmer, I guess it can get quite lonely working on your own if you don't have lots of help. That's it, absolutely. So, uh, we uh, I'm lucky enough here at the moment that I uh, farm with my father. So he, uh, he well, he's technically retired, so he's in holiday mode, but uh, he likes to come out and help um, a lot. So it, it helps to uh, have a bit of company around here, and obviously then shadow then as well. That's very good. Um, let's have a little look here. Uh, Connor, do you know what temperature the milk is kept at in the bulk tank? Yeah, so uh, the temperature of the milk is between, around uh, three to four degrees. Um, so when the cows are, um, are milking, it comes out at, um, at around uh, 20 degrees. Or a bit, uh, it's a little higher, it's around 30 degrees, so it comes out at body temperature. And, uh, and from then we, uh, we pre-cool it. So we run it through some cold water to bring the temperature down a little bit before putting it into the tank because that big tank uses a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we try to reduce the amount of energy we use here. And that one of the ways is we, we pre-cool the milk um, by a few degrees and then it goes into the big tanks, which then uh, bring it down to the, the three or four degrees and it's kept at that temperature until it's collected. Um, and taken away and then yeah, it's exactly. after that we, we wash the tank and then it, we start the whole thing again yeah you start the whole process again so we saw we saw connor's bulk tank in the video that he'd made for us and then we got to see a truck taking the milk away in the video that we watched first so once the milk comes out of the cows it goes uh into the bulk tank uh, well first it's cooled slightly goes into the bulk tank is kept at three degrees which is cold enough that there's no bacteria growing we don't want mm -hmm. any bacteria growing in our milk. And then when it goes off to be processed, they can get rid of any dangerous bacteria. Hmm. We maybe have time, I think, for two more questions. Let's have a look. Uh, Skull Maeve Podrick in Canturk would like to know what your favorite farm animal is. Hmm. Uh, probably my dog. <laughs> And um, yeah, I, we yeah probably with the dog. I'll be honest. Um, I do I, I I do enjoy um cows. Uh, they're they're lovely animals. Um, when they're when they're little calves, they're adorable. Um, even when they're screaming to be fed, but um, but yeah, they're they're a lovely, gentle animal. Uh, they're it's a great way of to work with them. Uh, but uh, dogs, uh, best friends. I don't think that's the, that will ever change. 
yeah I think that's fair enough the dog is, is a person's best friend um, and mm. Connor when did you start farming so um like you were saying earlier I grew up on the farm here so I've been I first went out on the farm when I was able to walk um so and I've been there going here since but I've only started working full-time here uh two years ago uh so I came down in uh December of 2020 uh so we moved down from we were living in Dublin um and uh myself and my girlfriend and we moved down um to here to my family farm and been here for like two years now super when you were when you were a child and you were out on the farm was there any age appropriate jobs that you did did you feed the calves or what kind of jobs did you do when you were very young yeah yeah absolutely so once i think uh from the there's a few photos lying around of me when I was about maybe uh, probably around junior fence class and uh, I was holding a bucket for my dad when he was out fencing the fields so where we put up fences in the field to divide them and I'm just holding the, the bucket um, with all the bits of tools and bits of pieces for him so anything that was useful to him so it's just being an extra pair of hands or to go fetch um, tools or anything like that for my father and then as I got older, um, we start to work more with the animals. Um, so like that, feeding calves um, and bedding their pens, making sure they're all nice and clean. And then when I was about uh, 12 and 13, I started milking in the parlor. So at that point, then you start working with the cows. So up, up until then, it's still a bit small to be working with them. because, mm -hmm. Like you say, they're big animals. So you just need to be uh, a little careful around them. So it takes a few years to to get the, the knowledge of when, what, knowing what when to be around them when it's best to move away from them so um yeah yeah so as the years go on we get more and more jobs so until i'm at this point where i have all the jobs <laughs> yeah well, you needed i guess you needed to start from from the simplest job and work your way that's up, it. Which is very important that's it, yeah yeah um, saint augustine school would love for us to say hello so we say hello to saint augustine's so you can give them away hello hi everybody now okay we maybe have one more question and then we've got to get going because i'm sure i'm sure uh they've got lessons to get back to or maybe they've got break time coming up um, second class in blarney street in county cork how oh how old were you when you got your first cow so i think again this is where so connor grew up on the farm so when he was born i would imagine his his father had cows on the farm already but did you ever did you ever get given a cow as a gift or anything to look after in particular Connor? Yeah I think I was um I think it was maybe 10 or 11 and I was uh given a calf uh by my dad so uh instead of uh giving me uh pocket money um uh, for all my work and hard efforts uh he decided that you can have this calf so it was a, a lovely um belgian blue calf so we uh so it was a little uh, so but then we reared for uh i think it was three months and then we brought it into the mart and it was sold to another farmer so i got to rear it for a few months before we uh decided to sell it on to another farmer who then uh reared her to it, it was an owl. brilliant and um... I think that's all we have time for. There was loads of excellent questions, but I think we've answered most of them. Um, there's there's actually a few questions that have come in about the cat and the kittens. So can you just explain the cat and the kittens to us? Yeah, yeah sure, no worries. Uh, we have three, oh, there, was, there were three kittens uh, that we only got this year. Uh, so we used to have lots of cats um but over the years they sadly passed away and uh for a long time we didn't have any uh we would just have dogs um but when i came back i decided we'd get uh, a few uh we'd have a few cats around so we decided to we got five kittens from one of my friends uh, who's a farmer here in Kerry as well and uh they're cat kittens so we got three lovely little kittens and uh so we don't have names for them actually 
uh, they're only, um, I think they might only be maybe four or five months old now. Uh, so they're quite young still, but they're getting big and strong now, thankfully. So they're, they love roaming around the farm. So there's no, we're very happy to have them around now. Um, but if anyone has any suggestions on names, let's take them on board. <laughs> Okay, lovely. On that note, we will say goodbye to Connor and I will be contacting your teachers again when it's time to have our winter webinar. So that was brilliant. Thanks a million, Connor. It was lovely for all the pupils to get to meet you and for you to zoom into their classroom. We really appreciate it. And we will see you again in winter, so in December or January. So for now, that's bye for us here in uh, Farming Through the Seasons and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.